Last night, we told you the chilling story of a Quebec woman arrested for hacking into people's personal computers and spying on them through their webcams. It's not the only creepy thing hackers can do. In fact, right now, a website out of Russia is streaming hacked security cameras and webcams, including dozens here in Canada. And as Mike Armstrong reports, most people have no idea they're being watched. Computer hackers have caused headaches and caused untold losses for countless companies, individuals, and governments. A cautionary tale tonight for people buying concert tickets online. A Montreal mom thought she'd done everything right when buying tickets for her daughter for a sold out One Direction concert. But she ended up out of luck and out of pocket. It's disturbing to hear how easy it is to drag young Montreal girls into prostitution. It's even more disturbing to learn that very often, recruitment by criminals is happening in the home and parents don't have a clue. That's right, and I guess the lesson here is that no matter how secure you think your information is, when you put it online, it never really is If you're going to do it in person, there's <laughs> nothing is safe online. And devices called key loggers were recently discovered on some public computers at two of the university's libraries. So-called internet sextortion is a growing problem especially among young people. A Montreal woman's Facebook account has been hacked twice in less than a week. Every day we're surrounded by them and use them. Cameras on our devices and set up for security, but not all are safe from other people. She found her face being used on another person's Facebook page. As it turns out, there are things people can do to prevent that from happening. We may be putting ourselves at risk when we use public Wi-Fi, but he's got lots of tips for how to protect ourselves. Ethical hacker or cybersecurity expert Terry Cutler is here today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, hello again, everyone. It's your trusted friend Terry Cutler here. I hope you enjoyed the second installment of my free video series. I'd also like to thank you for all the comments and the feedback about what you've learned so far. It really means a lot to me. So if you're watching this video from any other site other than internetsafetyuniversity.com, then get your browser over there right now. So just to recap what we learned in the last video, I talked about the latest online threat such as ransomware that's designed to hold your data hostage until you pay up to $25,000 to get it back. So we also spoke about fake antivirus and ads that are designed to infect your computer. And then finally, I walked you through how to know if your PC or webcams have already been hacked and if you're being watched. So in this third installment of this free video series, I'd like to change the pace a little bit. You see, over the last six years, I've watched friends account after friends account getting hacked into, or going on the six o'clock news to talk about how other people's photos are being used on fake profiles. So these people all had a couple of things in common, actually two. One, they all had very weak passwords. And two, all their, their photos were set to public, which means I don't have to be your friend or even connected to you in order to view or download your photos. Now, many of you are on Facebook, so I want to show you how you can lock down the security of your profile to make sure it isn't revealing too much personal data. And not only that, if someone does get a hold of your password, they won't be able to log in once we activate the ultra secure Facebook security feature. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to your Facebook profile by clicking on your name here at the top. For this demonstration, I'll be using my own profile so you can follow along. You'll then want to move your mouse to the top right over the lock icon and click it. Let's start with the privacy checkup. So the first thing you want to make sure is that your posts are set to friends and not public. If it's set to public, that means that anyone browsing on your profile, whether he's connected friend or not, will see what you're posting. So it's not a good idea. So you want to make sure it says friends and click next. Next, we're going to tighten up what our installed applications are doing. You might have a much bigger list than me, but let's look at a few examples so you can finish off your list. Now, some of my applications are set to friends, public, and only me. Now, these are the applications we've used to sign into Facebook with. So in my case, I have no use for the Costco Photo Importer app, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Vimeo, which is a compare to YouTube, is set to public. For me, this is okay because I share videos like this and I want the world to watch, share, and learn from it. First Touch Soccer, I can delete. Scission PRE, I have no use for. Delete. Uh, Kuler YouTube, we can delete because it's no longer available, it's discontinued. And the rest I use. Now, once you've gone through and cleaned up your list, let's click Next. Now, the Profile Information section is very important, so let's make sure we get this locked down properly. Now, Facebook allows you to get granular with your permissions. You have choices like Public, Friends, Friends of Friends, Only Me, and Custom. Now, it also allows you to share this information with specific networks. So if we click on the custom, you can be specific with whom you share this information with. Now, if we click on the share with button, it assumes you mean friends, but you can also start typing in people's names and only they would see this information. 
Now you could also type in people's names in the don't share with section if you think they shouldn't see it. Your phone number should be set to only me, unless you really want to share it. Now I have my phone number in here because I use Facebook's advanced security feature called two-step verification, which I'll show you at the end of this video. Now as for emails, I share one of them so that people can reach me if they have any questions. Otherwise I set them to only me. Now for birthdays, I have it set to friends. This way on your special day, you get to feel the love from all your connections. Of course, you can always hide this by changing it to only me. So as for my hometown, I keep it as friends as well. Now, once you're done, click finish up. Yay, you're done. No, not really. We got a few more things to look at. Now let's click the lock another time and select who can see my stuff. Now the question is who can see my future posts? Now let's make sure this says friends and not public. And I'll show you why. All right, so next we'll click on user activity log. Have you ever wondered what you did last summer? Well, Facebook can tell you. Anywhere you see a picture of a globe, this is a problem. This means that the person's profile you're interacting with is set to public. So the first thing you need to do is share this video with them. You can, of course, delete this activity by clicking on the pencil and choose delete. Now, look for things like photos that you've been tagged in that has a globe next to it, and I'll tell you why in a minute. You might also notice an icon with three people in it. This is called friends of friends. This means that my friend's friend, who's not even connected with me, could see my posts. I've even seen this being problematic because whenever I teach this at schools, there's kids that are being stalked because their friend's profiles are endangering them. That's why it's important to help assess your friend's profile as well. So again, if you see their profile isn't locked down, share this video with them. Now, to answer the question from a minute ago, the reason you don't want your photo tagged by a friend with a globe, which means public, next to it is because people can find and look for your photos using a technique called Facebook graphing. If you go to the top left search field and type something like photos of Terry Cutler, my pics that I've set public will show up. Those of you with all your permissions set to public can get most of your profile pulled from using this technique. We're not done yet, so let's click on the lock again, click on who can see my stuff, and click on view as. I love this feature because it allows you to browse your own profile as an outsider. What's even more cool is that you can go also to the top here and browse your profile as a specific person you're connected with. Now, as you can see, or can't see for that matter, my wall posts. So unless you're connected with me, it won't show. So if you see posts on your profile that you don't want, exit out of the preview mode by clicking on the little X in the top left-hand corner, and let me show you how to fix that. I'll take this example of the Star Wars 8 production announcement post. If you pull down the privacy setting for this post, yours most likely says public. So go ahead and change that to friends. Now, remember, we also changed who can see my future posts to friends as well, so we won't have this problem anymore. Now let's continue. Click on the lock again. Click on who can see my stuff. Click view as to start browsing your profile. Now click on about, and let's double check to make sure that the majority of the information isn't displayed here unless you really want it to be. Now, the more the information is left open here, it allows for someone to create a fake profile using your picture to connect with your friends. They can later try to trick them by saying, hey, I'm overseas and I got mugged and I have no money. Can you send me 500 bucks? Please don't fall for that. Now keep scrolling down. It's a good idea to clean up your group likes to avoid anything coming back on you that you shouldn't have liked in the first place. Now, if you're a pet owner living in Montreal, I encourage you to check out Spa for Paws or the Spa Cat Pat, as we say in French. Highly recommend them. Now, if you scroll back up and notice under family and relationships that you have family members listed there, you simply again X out of the preview mode and change it from public to friends and start again. There's a good chance you're seeing family here because their profile is at the public. So again, please share this video with them so that this way they can lock down their own profiles and then share it with their friends so they can lock their own profiles down as well. Now, many people have their personal photos incorrectly set. Now, I can more often than not click on some random person's profile who I'm not even connected with and see their vacation photos or their family parties. It's a good idea to keep these to friends only or delete them. Now, you have to remember something that whatever you post online is never deleted. There's always a copy somewhere. So always think before you post. So if you see a photo that shouldn't be public, simply click on their photo and click on the globe in the top right of the picture and change it to friends only. Now, some of you don't own a PC and do everything from your phone, so don't worry, I got you covered. Now, the settings are similar from the app. All you gotta do is go click on the more icon at the bottom left and scroll down to privacy shortcut. From here, you can do similar functions, but I find you have more control from the PC browser. Now, I wanna show you one last thing that relates to passwords. 
Now, I know so many people that create such crappy passwords whose codes can be broken in seconds. So with this little trick, I'm going to show you how you can secure your crappy password. Earlier, I spoke about my phone number being in my Facebook profile. Now, this is because if someone manages to crack my very strong password, they still won't be able to get into my Facebook profile because a special text message will be sent to my phone asking for their approval of their device. Now, without the combination of both passwords, they cannot access my profile. Now, let me show you how to enable this feature. Click on the lock again and see at the bottom here it says, see more settings. Once here, click on the security tab on the left. Next, click on login approvals and select require a security code to access my account from an unknown browser to get started. Now, the rest should be self-explanatory. So just to quickly recap what we've learned in this video, I showed you how to audit your Facebook profile and to see which pictures and personal information was not set up correctly. I also showed you how to enable login restrictions. This way you would know if someone's messing around with your account. And even though sometimes I've moved at lightning speed throughout these videos, I've really only scratched the surface of what's possible. So what's next? Well, I don't think it's a secret. I'm pretty sure you already knew this is leading up to a release of a new product. And that's one of the reasons why I made these free videos for you. It was sort of like an audition. After watching them, I wanted you to be able to say, this guy walks the walk, like a boss. <laughs> so seriously, how'd I do? Well, here's the thing, and I want to be clear. I am blown away and flattered and you know, slightly embarrassed at how excited people are about this program. Some of them must be clairvoyant and saw it coming as far back as video one. But I'm honestly a little concerned that some folks are a little too excited and want to buy before they even know what it is or what it costs and even if it's right for them. Now in the next video, I'm going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to spend a chunk of time telling you why my Internet Safety University program is not right for you. Yes, I do plan on teaching everything I know about protecting yourself from hackers and scammers in layman's terms on a technical way, from checking your PC and your Mac to see if you've already been hacked, to checking the security of your browser, to enabling real-time threat detection, to checking what your kids are doing online and how they're an easy target to internet predators, to learning how to secure a mobile device, to knowing what to do to protect yourself while traveling, to protecting yourself when you're connected to free public Wi-Fi networks, and to learning how to avoid the latest internet scams, just to name a few topics. It's really a premium level of education with high level of quality and quantity of bleeding edge information to keep you and everyone around you safe online. So the next video is going to help you decide. And even though it might seem like I'm rooting against success, I'm really not. I just want the right people for the limited amount of openings that I've gotten in this program. And I'll also share some things with you that you might not know about me, which may end up sealing the coffin for any potential relationships you might have. Alright friends, I'm off again to make that next video. In the meantime, make sure you and your friends are subscribed to my VIP list on InternetSafetyUniversity.com or from my blog at TerryCutler.com so that I can notify you of the big reveal date. That's when I plan on filling up this course with the next generation of savvy consumers. Stay safe, my friends, and I'll see you real soon.